What is solar energy? In this first lesson, we're going to start to understand solar electric systems. We want to think about how solar relates to the bigger global energy mix. We want to also begin to understand um, some differences of different solar uh, systems that we might see out there in the world. We're going to discuss some terminology so we can make sure that we're using the right terms and talking about the right technology so we know what we're talking about when we discuss solar power systems. And then start to visualize a little bit different ways that solar can be utilized in our everyday lives, whether that's at our homes, in our businesses, or in different ways throughout our community. We've been getting most of our electricity from non-renewable fuels. Things like natural gas, oil, coal, and nuclear power have been powering the globe and the economies of the world for a long time. It's amazing to see how these technologies have flourished, but what's happening now in the ability and access to renewable energy is really starting to change the landscape and change the fuel mixtures that we have available to us now as consumers and building owners, um, cities, governments, or municipalities. We're starting to have a lot more options on the market than we used to before with the advancement of new technologies and reduction in price and things becoming more commonly available. Uh, we can move past and we're starting to see the globe move past what we've been traditionally using as non-renewable systems. Every day it's easier to get our electricity from renewable fuels. Solar energy, which is the focus of this course and what we're going to spend the most time on. Um, hydropower has been around for a long time and actually some of the biggest and earliest large scale uh, utility power plants were originally hydropower based. Things like biomass in certain areas or countries where we have different availability of different materials, we can use biomass to uh, generate steam, run steam turbines and produce electricity. And then wind power is something that we've been harnessing as humans for a long, long time. It's changed a lot over the years and it's amazing to see um, how utilities have harnessed large scale, utility scale wind power plants and how the costs of these systems continue to reduce and their access be continues to become more available for people all over the world. Solar energy is utilized globally in two common forms. So you've seen solar pretty much at this point in the world. Most people have seen some solar, be it a little bit of small systems uh, or large scale applications. And there's a lot of different types that you may have seen out there, but not been familiar with how they work and what they do. We can primarily put solar into two categories as far as kind of normal systems that we see out there. On the left, we see what we call solar thermal systems. And there's a few different types of panels and things that we see in the world that produce solar thermal energy. And in certain parts of the world, these are common and all over rooftops. So solar thermal is heating water fundamentally. Now, most of the time, this is basically heating water for domestic use for things like washing clothes and showering and dishes and any sort of domestic heat needs. Um, sometimes it's not water. Sometimes we're heating a refrigerant like a glycol that we use for space heating and other possible industrial applications if we get into more of the commercial and industrial side of things. So solar thermal systems are very common all over the planet utilized to, to heat something whenever we need a, a source of heat in our in our world whatever that is we can utilize solar thermal systems and you've probably seen these around on the right is solar electricity that's what the focus of this training program is here so we're going to spend our time focused on solar electrical systems which have a slightly different look and work completely differently than solar thermal so if we see the two together we can start to understand the difference of what they look like and as we go further into this training we're going to understand a lot more about solar electricity how it works the different types of systems that are out there and how we can best utilize it in our lives as we start to understand and look at solar electricity and electricity generation basically coming from sunshine 
we want to start to think about a few of the things that are happening in the system and understand some of the terminology here around solar electric generation. So of course, the sunlight is the source of energy. And what we're doing is when sun hits the solar module, um, it's going to use a, what we call a cell, and those cells convert sunlight into DC electricity. We'll talk a lot more about this as we go along throughout this training. So when we start to get into the basic terminology here, um, the name of this technology is what we call photovoltaics. Now, photovoltaics, if we break that word down, photo means light, voltaics means voltage. So we're basically saying the technology is turning light into voltage or light into electricity. And so that's the name of the terminology for the, the, the types of cells and the technology that we use. So because photovoltaics, um, we'll see the abbreviation as PV. And that is something that the industry all over the world uses as PV, as the abbreviation for this technology. So as we go through the rest of this course, you're gonna see PV utilized as the primary technology that we're gonna focus on here. So we'll say things like PV modules or PV array or PV panels <clears throat> as we begin to discuss uh, different you know, system types and projects. So. That's where the word PV or the, the abbreviation PV comes from is photovoltaics. Now we're using the sun's light, we're creating electricity, and then we're consuming that electricity in many different ways. It could go into batteries, it could be used immediately, it could be sent into electrical transmission grid. Whatever that consumption is, whether it's a house or anything else, um, is the, the other side of it. So we generate the electricity from the sun and we're either gonna store it or send it off through, um, you know, to be utilized somewhere uh, for some electrical load as part of our electrical consumption. As we start to think about different applications for solar electricity, I'm gonna go through a number of different system types and, conf and configurations so we can start to see different ways that we can envision solar being utilized in our lives. One of the basic ways that we utilize solar and the benefits for solar is the ability for it to be either small or large scale, and it can be independent of the grid or connected to the utilities. In this case, we're looking at what we call standalone systems. Standalone systems mean we have an independent power system. It may or may not have battery storage, but it's a system that's gonna operate fully independently of any other electrical system. Some of the examples for things like this that we see is solar phone charging. A lot of places we need to charge mobile phones, uh, radios, flashlights, small electronic devices to make our lives easier. So small solar panels and portable solar devices can be utilized to charge small things. In the bottom left corner, we have a picture of a solar pumping system. And one of the things that we can use solar as a standalone application for is things like operating pumps for water pumping. And that water pumping allows us to do things like filtration and cleaning. We can move water for homes, for farms, for agricultural purposes, for towns, small towns and villages, and any number of applications that we need to operate pump systems and move water. And those can operate in a standalone or an independent way. We also see a lot of solar powered lighting systems out there in the world. It's really easy to utilize solar energy with small batteries to run lighting systems that we can have anywhere that is convenient to put them, regardless of whether we have utility power available. Another common application for standalone solar systems is refrigeration, where we might need refrigeration in areas where we don't have access to electricity otherwise, things that can be used for, um, for food supplies or for things like clinics where we need vaccine refrigeration and other uh, applications like that, that that we need to have remote and independent. Solar is also becoming very commonly used for, for residential and household use. Now, on a residential scales, we can run our homes with solar electricity and we can do that in different ways. We could run 
residential solar electric systems as standalone independent systems if we are already remote from any sort of utility or we can offset our electrical consumption in our homes by having a utility interactive or a backup power type of system for our residential applications. Solar is also becoming very commonly used to power businesses and industry. And so we are seeing all over the world more businesses and industrial applications utilizing solar energy as the costs continue to come down and the ability for this technology to be widespread. A couple of the images that we see here is a solar car park system where we're, what's great about things like this is we're able to use already existing space or real estate to add solar and, and add value to the site. Um, car parking areas like this where we can have covered car parks and be able to park under them gives us a great dual purpose of a space like that. On the right hand side, we're seeing a factory where we are using solar energy to run all the machines and the equipment in that factory anytime the sun is shining. Another common and quickly growing application for solar energy is what we call microgrids. Microgrids use solar to operate independent power networks and it's basically a a larger standalone system. And so with microgrids, what we're able to do is not only use solar, but also use other sources of energy combined to make kind of a hybrid energy system. And so what microgrids usually do is they may use solar and or multiple solar arrays spread out over an area. We could see wind power, we could see uh, backup generators, either gas or diesel. Um, and then they're all going to work together into one integrated network um, to create what we call a microgrid. Sometimes microgrids actually connect with the utility in areas where maybe we have a utility connection, but we need a supplemental or a backup source um, from the utility to run our, our farm or a compound or a town or a village. We're also seeing a lot of uh, small island developing states utilizing solar for islands and small island nations uh, to be able to have these independent power systems and reduce the amount of diesel consumption that a lot of these islands are utilizing right now. So a lot of small island developing states are seeing the ability to integrate solar and batteries and inverters into their existing diesel systems and dramatically reduce their fuel consumption and the fuel that gets transported to islands like this can be very expensive. And so the return on investment can actually happen quite quickly. The other thing that we're seeing very commonly now is large utility scale power plants. So as solar becomes more common and more cost effective, we're seeing that the utility scale solar power plants are being deployed all over the world and utilities and investors alike are diving into produce and own and operate their own solar energy power plants. And we're seeing this become quickly some of the cheapest price of delivered electricity anywhere on the planet. And so it's really amazing when we see the cost of solar coming down and the applications being widespread from either very small to very large gigantic solar power plants. At the end of each of these lessons, as we go through, there's just a number of additional resources that are here. If there's anything you wanna look at and continue to do research as you go through and learn more about solar energy.